pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. All right, so before we get into our regular meeting, we do have to open up the public hearing on the district-wide safety plan. This is something we discussed last month, and before any changes can officially be made to it, we do have to have a public hearing on it. Um, so I will open this up to anybody that's on line that would like to ask questions, but again, um, this is only for the district-wide safety plan. This is not for discussions on any other topic. So are there any Questions or comments on the changes made to the district-wide safety plan? Any chat comments or anything? No, nothing. Nothing. This can take a little mute himself, so nobody has. Okay. Well, hearing none, then we'll close the public hearing on the district wide safety plan. And now we'll go right into the regular meeting of the Board of Education for the month of August. Are there any additions, deletions to the agenda other than the additional um, appointments that were emailed to everybody beforehand? Just another couple of opportunity to make appearance. Okay. Right. We'll get into approval of minutes. Motion to approve the minutes from the reorganizational meeting on July 2nd, 2020. by Mrs. Yardy, second by Mr. Warren. Any discussion? All in favor? Carry 7 0. Motion to approve the minutes from the regular meeting on July 2nd, 2020. So, Dr. Yardy, second by Mrs. Cleveland. Any discussion? All in favor? Carry 7 0. And finally, motion to approve the minutes from the special meeting on July 30th, 2020. Motion by Mr. Ward, second by Mrs. Rusak. Any discussion? No in favor. And that passes 7 0. Mr. Rumsey, anything you want to highlight? Uh, since our last meeting, there's been ongoing prep for, for the reopening of our schools. Uh, lots and lots of meetings with stakeholder groups. Uh, Teacher staff presentations. Um, there's Q and A documents for our staff. It'll be up for the public as well. Next week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday evening, there will be uh, Monday night at six is the Dana Line meeting. Um, Tuesday night at six is the VEW meeting, and Wednesday night at six is the high school meeting. The process for that, based on everything, will be when we put that in the notices is to ask folks to email questions. And we'll go through an overview, but they're divided by building because nearly all questions now have become building specific procedural pieces. Um, and we've been on the we've been press releases, been on the radio, uh, really pushing things out. We're getting calls from parents with good, good questions, good email questions too. And we've been trying to respond to all those and accumulate those so we can put out for uh, folks with where for our our COVID crisis page on the website home page we're going to create really a reopening of schools page there now that's in the process to be open anytime now students parents have been and, uh, and through, instructed through robocalls calls uh, and mailings to those that without abilities uh, for student forms to return with medical issues things such as that we're starting to come so we can uh, compile those in a database and that's for Quite frankly, planning purposes for anybody with medical issues that we have to take into account and questions regarding transportation. Um, there is still a, um, work to do. I mean, many people had thought they turned in the reopening plans, and then the governor put out that they didn't do it. Um, so that's been controversial. Uh, the reopening plans we have tomorrow. We have to post three new plans. They've asked um, the governor has, and that's the the contact tracing plan, the uh, remote learning plan, and uh, and our uh, testing. testing plan and our COVID testing. So I've got them all right here. Our draft plans right in front. I just want to pull it out. The uh, the COVID testing and the uh, tracing really we're relying on Department of Health for that. So it's not a lot to it. Remote planning is already in our big plan, but that's more of the COVID. Uh, 
building principals and working with all of our teacher leaders, our department chairs, our grade level reps on putting those procedures together and that'll be up there. Um, it's it's an ongoing frequent new questions. Yesterday, um, you know, speaking of uh, um, the testing piece, there's clarifications coming because uh, they, they've added a comma in one plan and caused a whole and reform. And we're trying just to make you aware we're not pushing it yet because there's supposed to be clarification coming on it, but they've added a comma that results in a negative COVID testing if you need to come back, or even if you were quarantined or before it's said you could quarantine or your, your doctor's been saying you had a strep throat or whatever that or a negative COVID test. Now they're saying it's a pan. But that's what we need to change because all that's going to do is log jam testing and back people up like they've never seen before. Um, if any screening and any symptom you have to get a negative COVID test, that's uh, going to be quite cumbersome, especially with the younger cherubs that come in with every symptom under the sun. So we expect clarification on that. That's just something that was just thrown at us as of yesterday. So these are the example. The reason I bring it up is that's an example of it. We're assuming that's going to be changed, so I'm not pushing the panic button. But we have two versions of the plan to post: one with, one without. And uh, and uh, if it does turn to that, then obviously there's going to be a huge advocacy piece on that. Point. It's just there's something new all the time coming at us. The curveballs left and right as you're going, and, and uh, throw all that into it. And now there's uh, questions regarding funding. They're pushing some of the handle a little bit. With Funding cuts that are happening. We're due half a million dollars from last year's UPK yet. They're, not, they're holding that. That's been withheld. Um, and quite frankly, we have 1.2 million coming for UPK this year that uh, we're worried about. If those 20% cuts come, what's going to happen? That's just UPK. So we've had lots of conversations, had a long superintendent's meeting today, one yesterday, and uh, supposedly there's something coming with the federal stimulus next week that would cover that, but it's a uh, we seem to be getting into crunch time with some of these, these crazy huge things going on right now to impact the real thing. A um, couple small things there. Uh, we're, we've met today on the SRO program, opening up that. They're going to be certified more to handle some of the, the, uh, the trainings and such for uh, uh, part of a national program. So they'll be going through that component. Um, for de-escalation techniques, that's some of the things you hear about today in the protests and the controversies, they'll be done that way. And I, I am on the governor's, on the stakeholder group for this area um, for feedback so that the municipalities and the uh, law enforcement agencies can get their, their funding by examining all those uh, issues that are surrounding things. So the corn and more island baths are around the stakeholder groups right now. Which has been an eye-opening experience. So, uh, just throwing that in there is uh, of all the things going on. It's not just schools. Schools is the major component, the big focus right now. But there's a lot of other avenues that are huge in our communities. We're in the center of all that. Uh, amazing staff working their tails off. Admin have been working hard. Staff are already coming in with the curriculum meetings, preparing for the remote learning, preparing for the hybrid learning, and I know full well that if they have the opportunity, they're going to pull it off and shut it. So I mean, that Any questions for Mr. Thank you for you and your team for this great team. This. Absolutely great team. Well, I don't have anything away this month, so we're on to district reports. Uh, Capital update, you get, or capital project, you guys are just wrapping up punch list items. Punch list items, and we've uh, had the submission to the state for the emergency project, we didn't hear back on that for, for purchases on the, you know, the flushometers and the water, the bottom filling machines, and uh, capital outlay, uh, working on the boilers for that. So it's just three pieces. Okay, yes, sorry. Backtracking one thing, I, I heard some schools are struggling to get PPE or we... It's a huge issue everywhere. Um, if that was a component uh, of our conversations in the last two or three days with the Department of Health um, and Emergency Services. Um, Trees is doing a great job trying to get as many uh, pieces in here as it is right now. Um, the county is 
helping us out with bridging the gap until there's delays of PPE coming in because sometimes the equipment's are on site. Sometimes they're, uh, you know, they're saying delivery early October, so they're, they're kind of working together in, in, in concert with that. Um, but it's definitely an issue. Still no POCES consortium put together. To no, that was brought together. up at the county as well, and, and we're, we're forming our own little groups, but it's, uh, it's, it's sad. We wish we could have done that. Um, any questions on the end of year graduation report that uh, Mr. Siebert submitted? That was the one you had last, last month. <laughs> Well, then we'll get into to hear about our how summer school went this year from uh, Mr. Sitzerbach and Katie Boyer. You guys are up. Well, I just I wanted to start by thanking the board and Joe for letting me go forward with this um, move. It was incredible. Um, I also want to thank the staff, the teachers, and the uh, related service providers for jumping in the boat with us and, and taking it on. It was very scary. I think mean, the first week or so. Um, we had people so afraid that they, you know, that they were going to hurt somebody that they were super careful. And as we went through, we found that we became a little bit more still wearing the mask, still doing everything we're supposed to, but not wearing gloves every time we touch a kid and see a kid, <laughs> you know, so it was, it was quite interesting. I also wanted to thank Katie Boyer. She comes from Hammondsport. She's a CSE chair and school psychologist there doing her internship here with me. And hopefully, um, She's learned something from me. I've learned a lot from her. Um, <laughs> she um, has been with me since the spring. And, and at first it was going to be regular summer school. Then it was going to be, obviously it's going to be all Zoom. And, and we developed plans and we kept changing plans. And so she's been with me through the whole thing and has done a fantastic job. She's going to present tonight, which is our also our last night of in-person summer school today. So it's kind of a celebration. So good evening and thank you again um, for having me tonight. Uh, when Michelle had asked me to present to the board, she had said it was going to be on Zoom. So, uh, <laughs> so thanks Michelle, but no, in, in seriousness, I appreciate being here in person to be able to speak with you about our successful summer school that we had this year for students with disabilities. Um, and I wanted to stand here so you could be able to see some of the pictures of summer school as well. Um, so this summer we had four classrooms. Um, we had three 1201 classrooms as well as one 12131 classroom and a group of students who received remote instruction only. Um, among all of the students, 31 students participated in ESY this year. 26 of those students received hybrid instruction, which was two days a week in person and two days um, remote, or excuse me, three days remote. And um, we had divided the groups into two different cohorts. So a group would attend Monday, Wednesday, and the other group would attend in person Tuesday, Thursday. Um, within that, we had five students who opted for the remote instruction, and um, also five students were placed from other districts to attend this program, um, both either in person or the remote instruction. So one thing that I would really like to share with you is just the amount of progress that students were able to make this summer, um, just returning back to school after an extended period of time of not being in the building. And, and for this group of students, especially being in person was just very important for them to be able to receive the really good services in person and to, um, to be able to socialize with their peers and adults that are in the school setting. Um, students are very happy to return back to school. Um, they adjusted very well to just the new health and safety procedures um, and very quickly, I would have to say, um, and kudos to parents who really helped and have um, eased that adjustment for students, especially with you know, getting used to wearing a mask. Uh, according to just the progress notes that we were able to review, um, overall academic achievement had improved among all of our students. Um, and within that, 75% of our students in Ms. Hockaday's 1201 class presented or 
progressed in the iReady program, she had um, completed, had students complete like a pre-assessment and a post-assessment within the six week period. Um, and 75% of those students had made progress. Three out of four percent, or three out of four students in Mrs. Bay's class scored 75 percent or higher on the basic addition and subtraction facts. So that was um, something that was a, a goal for them on their IEPs, and they had made progress within that goal. Students participated in lessons that um, targeted their social emotional skills, and this was something that, with all the health guidance and um, mental health guidance. We thought it would be really important to invent that even more so this year uh, for students with that transition back uh, and addressing some of their social emotional needs, behavioral needs that they may have as they uh, transition back to school. And um, this year we had Amy Clark, the school psychologist at Bath. Um, be, she worked this summer and had targeted uh, weekly social skills lessons for each classroom. So students were able to participate in that. And some of the skills that they worked on was, um, you know, anger management, um, social distancing, and uh, learning how to not interrupt other people. Uh, in-person related services, again, this was really important for our students to have that in-person services, the physical therapy, the speech therapy, and the occupational therapy uh, to just further develop their skills, um, whether it be language skills, fine motor, or those other skills. So as you can see in the pictures, um, the teachers did a really amazing job setting up their classrooms this summer to allow for social distancing. Um, and within, you'll see on the picture, there's a floor tape that creates a box around their desks. Um, and of course, the maximum amount of students that we had in the classroom at, at one time was five. So it did provide a little bit extra space. Um, but students were very aware of their um, boxed-in space, what they could be in that space without a mask. But as soon as they exited that space, they knew that they had to wear a mask. So it really provided that boundary for students. Um, and another thing that I wanted to share that students really gravitated to, um, just to get that concept of social distancing, um, Mrs. Clark had, um, she had chose the distance between you and a cow. So the students really enjoyed that and, you know, is there a cow between you and so-and-so? And students were like, oh, you know, so that was just a way to conceptualize what six feet really meant. And they enjoyed that. There was cows, you know, posted around the hallways. And here's just some pictures that I'm um, sharing that I wanted to share with you guys as well. Um, there was a lot of arts and crafts to help develop their fine motor skills. Uh, there was a lot of different cooking opportunities. So students learned how to follow directions by preparing snacks. Um, for their class, and um, and they seem to really enjoy that. And you'll see um, some more cooking and different arts and crafts that they did in class. In the last two days, we had an end of year celebration and a summer celebration for our students, um, both indoors and outdoors, while also um, you know, adhering to the health and safety guidelines, uh, but they seem to still enjoy it. They, you know, participated um, and, you know, um, it was like balloon baseball or water balloon baseball uh, and it was tennis with a balloon and a fly swatter. So just different adapted activities for students to engage in the summer to make it fun uh, and, they, and they really had a great time. And lastly, we just wanted to share, um, we had our Monday and Wednesday cohorts and our Tuesday and Thursday cohorts um, sit socially distanced on the bleachers so you guys could see everybody that participated this summer. So I'll just open up to you guys. Do you guys have any questions about the program? I don't know if you noticed, but in a couple of slides back, the little girl that was cooking, she even had gloves on. So, I mean, we were really, the littlest ones even got the concept of we got to be careful and use proper attire and mm -hmm. staying in their space. And if they weren't in their space, they often, if they come out without their masks, all of a sudden they go, oh, we got to get our masks, and they run in and get it. So, it really became pretty natural, actually. And teachers reported that they really felt that it would help these this group of students adjust to the, the procedures in September, so they're, they're coming in ready to go. Um, 
Um, which will just make it a smoother transition for everybody. One question. And the parents were positive. Did we uh, yeah. get any feedback from them? Um, yes, we get some good feedback. Mm -hmm. the, the parents um, were thrilled to have their kids in school and in person. And there were some parents that were pretty frustrated um, up until the summer school began. Um, I had a couple of them that were on the phone with me all the time. As soon as the governor, the governor made an announcement, she was calling her and talking to me. And what, are we, what are we gonna do? Um, hopefully we can get this started. I had quite a few phone calls the night he announced we had in person. So it's um, it was a very positive experience. The parents that I talked to have said wonderful things. He did do a, um, in my report, I think we wrote about the, uh, assessment so she had, had been able to speak to some parents about the um about how they felt about the program so is there anything we've learned from the summer program that's carried forward into our plan to, to open in september i would say that the first thing is that if we, we we met we had our virtual meetings with our our all the staff the last couple of weeks, but we also met personally in this room with the special ed staff to include them because they were going out and teaching. And the one thing that came out is, and people are going to start relying on them more, is they believe in everything that's going on and that's going to relate to the staff. And we're talking about using them as leaders to help with the, you know, the, the process moving into September, the, the things that they were able to do, the perceptions of the kids. And we worry about the kids being so scared and doing different things that they proved them wrong with that population. That is, it's not going to happen. Um, proof that you can be in a room and be and follow those protocols enough that you can have several uh, moments without masks. You know, most of the day, in fact, if you wanted to, as you're going into those classes. So the break, breaks the mask will have are significant. So unless the the governor or the department of health changes those guidelines, we we are able to do that with those guidelines. I think that helps too. It's not all day long. I think too the, the original fear that teachers felt when they came to work with us here this summer, the first week, you know, they're wearing gloves every time they touch a child's hand, hold a child's hand. Um, I think that moment of fear kind of we we talked to Darlene Smith. I, I sent many questions to her through the summer. Um, and one of them was that first week of school, do the teachers and staff really have to wear gloves all day long? They, they are. And she said, no, I would not want them to. I want them to just wash their hands often and frequently and, um, unless somebody's ill or if they're preparing food. So, you know, sending that kind of stuff out, stuff out to the staff made them kind of relax a little bit. So, and I think that happened in the first three days. Yep. Mm -hmm. it's, so, new, it's new for everybody. And then once they say, you're talking away from the lunch. We can do this. Um, it, is it going to be the same all the time? Are we going to have bumps in the road? Absolutely. But you know, I, I can tell you the the conversation we had with the special ed staff. I and Randy would attest that they feel very confident. They want to share what they want. I mean, I've been asked that several times. So you know, we can probably help them share a lot, and, and we want that. And they were so on board with us. From the beginning. I mean. They were scared, but they were really on board with knowing how important it is. So. Did you have to send anybody home? No. No. no we had we had an incident where it was you know, minimal, where a parent called and said they were possibly being tested. They, the parent, being tested. I said, "Come home." But no, nobody, nobody went home for anything. And he had really good attendance, too. Pretty good, yeah. The, the typical. Yeah, <laughs> summer school. Yeah. 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 Great. Absolutely. Well, thank you yeah, so much yeah, for this opportunity. Thanks thank to Michelle for, yeah. she did a lot of work planning with that. Eric <laughs> <that's laughs> Ortiz, the transportation component was huge. And then and, and Katie Boyer, who really, <clears throat> she fit in nicely. She looked great in Harold Blue. Take a motion then to approve the recommendations for the Committee on Special Education. Motion by Mr. Warren. Second by Mr. Jardin. 
Any discussion? All in favor? Carry seven zero. Let's do business. Anything anybody would like pulled from the business consent agenda? Take a motion then to approve the uh, business consent agenda. Motion by Mr. Rusak, seconded by Dr. Darby. Any discussion or questions? All in favor? Carry seven zero. <coughs> In your packets, you had a recommendation to approve Mr. Rumsey as the lead evaluator for the administrative staff. And the principal is the lead evaluator. That is that correct? So, a motion to approve that recommendation. Motion by Mrs. Cleveland, second by Mr. Jarrow. Any discussion there? All in favor? There is 7 0. Any questions on the 2019 20 guidance plan? Oh, I'm sorry, 2020, 2021. Were there any major changes that made the dates? Because last year had to take over on, so this year does Okay, make a motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Jarvis, second by Mrs. Rusak. Any questions? All in favor? That carries 7 0. We just had the public hearing on the district safety plan, so this will be the second reading and adoption. Any Comments or questions on final comments or questions on that? Make a motion then to approve it. Motion by Mrs. Cleveland, second by Mr. Ward. All in favor? Seven zero. Moving right along, this is the first reading for the changes to the um, code of conduct. Mr. Ramsey, do you want to share us those? Yeah, the code of conduct really is nothing major, but we've allowed. We use a lot of input from stakeholder groups or anything right now. There's just the additions of um, those additions of vaping into the code of conduct, um, as well as uh, we're asking. It's not in there now, but but in the examples of dress code, we put the masks on there. You know, so that's just only to reinforce that it's a part of COVID. And there's the superintendent's declaration that overrides everything that a handout that came from the attorney. But just nothing states that. Uh, the COVID related pieces of the right that based on this. Okay, so we'll move right along. This is a first reading only. Any changes to the code of conduct have to have a public hearing as well, similar to what we just did with safety plans. So that'll be do that before next month's regular meeting in September. As you go through this, if there's any questions or comments. Shoot them to the pieces of And then again in September we'll do a public hearing on the changes and then go to adopt. All right. Uh, non resident tuition. Mr. Rose, you want to introduce that one as well? Sure, we've talked about it recently. It's uh, nothing more than, you know, at this point, uh, I recommend that you. Uh, um, maintain the current tuition for right now for the 2021 school year, but I will bring it up at, at a future board meeting to by no later than January 21 to uh, for any impact the parents we can give them six months notice to what will be for the following school year of any raises at that point. I think they do that's for other schools today. The other pieces really aren't required, but it's it's so you're aware. Right now, there's no new students coming in unless there's something of a student that's already a non resident student. UPK, we've evaluated where we were allowing them up to this point, but at the same time, it's uh, based on where the UPK grant goes to staffing, we that may change as well. But this is to maintain our social distancing pieces, and it's not a huge financial impact, really, it's just more. Usually, we shut them down next week anyway to see where we're at. Okay, so then take a motion to approve the tuition rate for non resident students, just the grade itself. Okay. Motion by Mrs. Rusak, second by sorry, Mrs. Jarvin. Sorry, first. Any questions? <laughs> All in favor? Uh, carries 7 0. Next item is an option to uh, issue a revenue anticipation note, and this is recommendation from Mrs. McKenna based on, obviously we just heard that they're withholding 
already five hundred thousand dollars are due from the past school year finances on the UBK and the rest to withhold more. So we gotta make sure we have enough money in the bank to mm -hmm. pay our bills and everything. So this is just in, to give the business office the option to do it if needed, if all these cuts get all through on correct. Okay. Did I misstate anything? Is that yes. Um just to have it out there, have you approve it, um, we will notify you if we need to act on it. We would, as the president, we have to sign off, but just to have the language down so the board knows, you know, what's going on with the state aid increases and stuff, if we ever have to use it. Yeah. Just to give you authorization and put it in our back pocket. We would use something like this maybe for, um, like, the first payroll, if we didn't have the tax money coming in, we would, it's a revenue and taste anticipation note, or if we were waiting, the state aid payments come in on the end of the month. So we would do a short note just until that revenue came in. We won't have to, but it's something we need to do just in case. So <laughs> take a motion to approve that motion by Mr. Ward. Second by Dr. Narby, any other questions? Favor? Okay, carry seven zero. Uh, next is to approve the official tax rate. Um, I think in the memo that I came through was during budget season, we were looking at 16.47. It came in 10 cents lower, which is good, but still a bit of an increase over last year, which we all we only had many discussions on that during last year's budget. So I guess uh, I'll take a motion to approve the official tax rate. Motion by Mrs. Cleveland, second by Mr. Warren. Any discussion there? All in favor? Thank you, Gary. 7 0. Turn to personnel. Um, is there any need to have any names pulled out of the personnel consent? Sorry, she is. You want to just stay? <laughs> you want to just stay? Yeah. Yeah. You notice any others? I motion then to approve the personnel consent agenda. Motion by Mrs. Yardley, second by Mrs. Rusak. Any discussion? All in favor? Carry 601. Mrs. Cleveland abstaining. This tour is going to be a white card. No. Huh? No. So. so. <laughs> She's done with her lifeguarding She's career. Life She's done life with a lifeguarding life career. <laughs> She's going to be a sub. For her. Um, okay, we have one in structural re uh, resignation, and that is from Erica Stryker, who is a third grade teacher who is moving on down south. Sad to see her go, especially Mr. Warren. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A strong teacher. Yeah. Yeah. She's a good. Big loss. So, uh, motion to approve the resignation of Eric Stryker. Motion by Dr. Narvi. Any discussion? Wish her lots of luck down there. And yeah. It'd be fun. All in favor? Anyone vote no? <laughs> that carries seven zero. Still got next to population. <laughs> sure. okay. We have one non instructional retirement, and that is a request from Margaret Van Heusen, retiring from the food service staff. I take a motion to approve that retirement. Motion by Mrs. Cleveland, second by Mr. Warren. Any discussion there? All in favor? Carries seven zero. We wish Margaret the best. Three great right years and thank her for all her service. Okay. We have three non structural resignations. Uh, unless there's an objection, I'll read the names. If we'll do this as consent all together. Okay, the first is from Chris McConnell, resigning as PC coordinator. We have Dan Herrick uh, resigning as um, the cleaning staff. And then Shannon Wyatt uh, resigning as a food service helper. So motion to approve those resignations. By Mr. Warren, second by Mr. Warren. Discussion there. All in favor? There's seven zero. 
We have a bunch of non instructional appointments. So, again, if there's no objection, we'll just do these as consent. And actually, I did forget one thing back to instructional. We do have an instructional appointment. That was one of the additions. Uh, we'll just do that right now. So, that is the appointment of Olivia Ennis as a social service teacher. There's a motion to approve that instructional appointment. Motion by Mrs. Yardum, second by Mrs. Rustak. Any discussion? All in favor? 37 0. Congratulations to Olivia. Welcome to her board. Okay, so the non instructional appointments, again, we'll do these as consent. I'm going to read the names. First is uh, Michael Rice is bus driver. We have Michael Scrocky is bus driver. Shell Hitt is cleaner. Cheryl Helm is cleaner. Elaine Hall is cleaner. Kyle Haitman is a monitor. Laura Cobb is a bus monitor. M. Force is a bus mechanic bus driver. And finally, Brian McCann, food service. A motion to approve those probationary projects to the non structural staff. Motion by Dr. Narby. Second by Mrs. Cleveland. Any discussion? All in favor? And that carries 7 0. All right. Miss anything? All right, well. It's all good. Um, since we're still going remotely, we'll carry through with how we've been doing this the past few months. Um, if there's any questions from the public, please submit them to Mrs. Oates or Mr. Ramsey. I know we've got quite a few, obviously, after the last <laughs> meeting. And we've all been answered. So keep sending them, and please make sure to attend the uh, meetings next week too for, for those with kiddos in school to learn about different plans in each building. We do have to go into an executive session to discuss some personnel issues and a legal, uh, legal matter. There won't be any action taken after. Uh, but with that, I'll take a motion then to go into executive. Motion by Mr. Warren, second by Mrs. Cleveland. Any discussion there? All in favor? Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the last few weeks of your summer. Thank you all for coming tonight.